Today, we're going to add fog to our custom lighting model. Let's go. All right, we're in the middle of a series of videos where I've been showing how to create your own custom lighting models. So instead of just controlling the base color, normal smoothness and metallic properties, this shader is actually doing the math to calculate the diffuse, specular, and ambient lighting. You can see I've got these various blocks here. The really cool thing about this is that you can customize how the lighting works, something that typically you can't be done in a node-based shader tool. If you haven't seen the previous videos in the series yet, I'll link the playlist down in the description so you can catch up. Today, we're gonna add fog to our lighting model. This is something that's fairly easy to do, but it can make a big difference. Let me show you what I mean. Here in our scene, we have two lion models. The one on the left is using our custom lighting, and the one on the right is using Unity's standard lighting. So here's the shader that it's using. It's just the standard URP lit. They look pretty similar up close, which is cool because it shows that we've done a pretty good job of approximating uh, Unity's built-in lighting model uh, with our custom version. But as we zoom out, now you can see that the lion on the right is receiving fog while the one that's using our custom lighting is not receiving fog. So if I bring in the lighting panel, on the environment tab, you can see here we've got our fog settings. I can toggle the fog on and off. I can change the color of the fog. I can change the fall off of the fog. and I can change the density of the fog, but none of these settings have any effect on the lighting model that we've created. And so today we're gonna fix that. So we'll add fog to our lighting model as well. Let's take just a minute and switch over to Unreal. So here's the custom lighting model that we've been building in Unreal. And just like I did in Unity, let's zoom out here and take a look at what our uh, model looks like as we zoom out. You can see like the further away from this model that I get, um, the more fog is added. And what you're seeing here is that our custom lighting model in Unreal, like we don't need to do anything special here because Unreal is automatically adding fog for us. So our lighting model is receiving fog already and so what I'm going to show you today, uh, you don't need to worry about Unreal in Unreal because Unreal is just handling it. All right, so let's switch back to Unity and we'll go ahead and add our fog. So here's our lighting model. And what we need to do is come over here to the end and create a brand new subgraph that we can insert right here at the end that will control our fog. So let's select our lighting folder, right click, and we'll create a new subgraph. And I'm just gonna call this new subgraph fog. And we'll open it up and I'll show you what to do. So first we're gonna come into our blackboard and I'm gonna add a color input here, a vector three, and we'll just call it in. And then for our output, I'll select our output block here, open up our graph inspector, and we'll make this one a vector three as well and I'm just gonna call this out. So we can pass the data in to our subgraph and then uh, pass the data out here. So I'm gonna bring in in, and just for now, I'm just gonna connect it straight up like that. We'll switch back to here and I'll bring in the fog subgraph that we just created and hook it up. So now we've got our scene or our lighting coming into our fog node and being passed out. And right now it's just doing nothing. So let's go ahead and hook it up and make it work. So the nice thing here is that we already have a node built into shader graph called fog. And I can bring in our fog node and you can see that it has two outputs. It has a color output and it has a density output. And this is the color of the fog. 
So if I pass the color of the fog out here, now you can see that our lion is just using the fog color and nothing else. So if I change um, the, the color here, we can get different color lions um, because we're just using the fog color itself. Um, but we actually need to take the density into account as well. So let's go ahead and jump back in here. What we want to do is blend between this in value and our fog color. This is what color our fog is when it's like completely fogged. And so really all I need to do is add a lerp node, connect up our input color here and connect up our fog color here. And then for this T value, what we're going to be using to blend between the two, I can just use the density. So as our fog becomes more dense, we're going to be using more of the fog color and less of the input color. So now I can just hook up my lerp here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking that fog color. I'm blending between the color of the fog and the color that my model was already based on how dense this fog is. And then I'm passing that value out. So let's go ahead and save this. And now you can see that our lion goes back to normal. But if we zoom out here, now you can see that just like our uh, standard Unity lit lion, our custom lit lion is also receiving the, fa the same fog effects. Let's turn this up a little bit more so it's, it's kind of obvious. So as we zoom in here, you can see that the lion on the right and the lion on the left are both receiving the fog in the same way. And this is, <laughs> this is really cool. Um, now, the nice thing about having custom fog is I can change the way the fog works. I can't change the way the fog works in Unity's built-in lighting, but for example, if I wanted my fog color to blend to the background sky, I could do that. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at that as an example. So I'm gonna add a reflection probe here, and the reflection probe actually samples uh, the background sky. So let's see what happens if we pass out just this as our fog. So now we have a chrome looking lion because we're sampling the reflections. We don't want that. We actually want it. And the reason that it looks like chrome is because it's sampling the highest LOD of our, of our skybox. But what we can do here is blur this by sampling a lower, a lower LOD. Like if I type five here, this is going to sample a very low resolution version of our skybox. And now our fog color is coming from our sky. I might even want to go even lower uh, than that for our LOD value. So now I'm just getting a very blurry version of our skybox as my fog color. And I can take this and pass it into color instead of the color that I'm that's coming from my lighting panel. So now let's save this. And as we zoom out, now you can see that the fog is blending to a fog value that's coming from my sky instead of the value that's coming from my lighting panel. So here, the fog color that I've set is yellow. But in my custom lighting model, I've customized the fog, so I'm actually using a low-res version of my skybox to fog the model. This is just one example, but there are all kinds of things that you can do now that you have control over how the fog uh, is being calculated. And that's really cool. All right, so if we come back here to uh, the shader that we've been creating, you can see that so far we've created our diffuse lighting, we've created our specular lighting, and we've created our ambient lighting. We're using the reflectance here to influence both our specular and our ambient. And then we're adding all of these values together, together with our additional lights. And then here at the end, we're doing our fog. So all of these points, because our lighting is custom, 
we can customize these so we can change the way the specular works. We can change the way the ambient works. We can change the, fo the way the fog works. We have control over these. So not only can we add or remove components to control uh, how much performance we're willing to pay for our lighting, but we can also customize these to get different interesting effects. Like we could create a tune shader in here. Uh, we could create a stylized looking uh, lighting model. All kinds of things because we have control uh, over the lighting model in the graph. I hope you think that's cool. I, I, I really appreciate that and I, I think it's great. All right, well, that's it for our video today. There are a bunch of different topics we could cover next week, um, but let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see done uh, in a custom lighting model. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great week.